Professor Schaefer, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, thanks for joining us today. You're an expert in transportation systems, so um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions on this. How do you see the transport sector in the context of more stringent climate mitigation policy in the future? On the supply side, I would expect more fuel efficient and less carbon intensive transportation technologies to be introduced into the sector, uh, which uh, as a direct effect will increase energy efficiency and reduce CO2 emissions, at least per unit transportation activity. Uh, on the demand side, I would not expect significant changes uh, because the higher cost of these technologies and the potentially higher fuel price, depending on the policy you implement, uh, may easily be um, um, outpaced by uh, income growth and um, incentives uh, that may exist uh, by the transportation industry for customers to um, uh, purchase vehicles uh, that may be um, uh, larger and more comfortable um, at, a, at a more reasonable or potentially um, beneficial price. And uh, what do you think is going to be the role of uh, infrastructure and public transport? Um, in, in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, I believe we need to look at all options that are on the table. And modifying the infrastructure and expanding public transportation are certainly two options that need to be pursued. Um, however, I would not be um, overly optimistic regarding the potential of these opportunities within the industrialized world, because much of the infrastructure already exists. Uh, you would need to have uh, extreme differences in population densities, extreme increases in population densities to have a meaningful impact on vehicle usage. And public transportation uh, in, its, in today's form is only cost effective in high population density areas. A key question is how to uh, provide uh, viable alternatives to auto uses, automobile uses in lower population density areas. Sure. And what do you think about the effectiveness, effectiveness of taxes uh, towards energy efficiency and uh, emissions reductions in the transport sector? Should they be um, uh, complementary to standards uh, or, uh, or substitutes? Or? Uh, most generally, I believe, um, before implementing taxes, we need to uh, provide viable alternatives to uh, automobile usage in order to increase the price elasticity and see a more uh, meaningful response uh, through this tax increase from the consumer side. Um, regarding the second question, yes, uh, there are certainly opportunities for carefully balanced um, um, taxes in addition to the CO2 emission standards, uh, for example, as a response to um, eliminating rebound effects that may exist uh, through, the, through the implementation of these standards. Yeah, pre precisely about the rebound effect. How much an issue, how important an issue is the rebound effect in the transport sector? Um, I, I personally can't see this, uh, can't see rebound effects to be a significant issue in transportation. Um, direct rebound effects in automobile travel are typically between 5 and 20 percent in the industrialized world. In air transportation, it's about 15 to 20 percent. Um, at, at this, and, and the reason is, with regard to automobile travel, is that um, the value of time increases as consumers become richer, uh, which means that the opportunity cost of travel increase, and consumers have better things to do than uh, driving around just because it has become cheaper. And finally, how do you see the regulation of the transport sector in the EU in 2030? Um, without having a crystal ball, um, I would expect that uh, infrastructure may be priced at one, from one point on, simply because we cannot build our way out of congestion anymore, and we may need to control externalities that are kilometer dependent in addition to those that uh, are fuel dependent like CO2. Um, ultimately, however, it will depend on how the population and governments perceive uh, climate change, perceive accidents, uh, congestion, uh, in comparison to other uh, societal uh, needs, such as healthcare, uh, such as pensions, uh, such as national security, and so on. Thank you very much, Professor Schaffer. Pleasure is mine.